Hello and welcome back to the series in which I talk about how to kind of update some of those Spacey 2.0 commands and codes to more better comply with Spacey 3.0. And in this series, we're addressing really kind of the main areas where changes happen, and that's in the training and custom factories area of Spacey 3.0. In this video, I'm going to show you how to introduce custom factories. And as we're going to see, a custom factory is just something that doesn't already exist in the Spacey 3.0 documentation, or sorry, in the Spacey 3.0 um, list of predefined components or factories. So things like NER, uh, limitizer, tokenizer, things like this. And the factory is going to be something that's a custom function that does something to the doc object typically. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a script that introduces how uh, introduces a new component that doesn't already exist. And I'm going to walk you through the steps right now. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to import Spacey. And we're also going to say from Spacey.language, lowercase there, import language, language, uppercase there. We're going to just go ahead and import those right now. And we're going to make a decorator. That's going to be the et symbol. And that's going to allow us to modify language.component. And we're going to modify this with one argument right here. This is going to be the name of the component. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this cap maker. Essentially, all this fun little function is going to do is it's going to take in the object and just alter it by capitalizing it. It's a toy example, but to demonstrate the essential components so that in future videos, we can address the more complex concepts of uh, factories. So we're going to make a uh, function here within this decorator, and we're going to call it uh, cap maker. And that's going to take one object, and that's going to be the doc. It's going to be the only keyword that we pass to it. That's going to be the doc object that gets passed through a spacey model. This is the thing that holds all the metadata, like things like all the entities, the tokenized form of words, the, the limitized form of words, etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to have it just print off. And this is a toy example, like I said, doc.text.capitalize. Capitalize, there we are. And then we're going to have it return the doc as well so that as it goes through, it can do all that. So what we're going to finally do after this is just do language.component, and we're going to pass in two arguments here. The first one is going to be the name of the component, which is cap maker, and the next one's going to be the function. And this is going to be func is equal to cap maker, the name of the function that we're actually incorporating. And when we do this, we see this little output, which tells us everything is looking good. The next thing we need to do is we need to create a blank model that we can add this to. So let's go ahead and make NLP equal to spacey.blank. We're going to make a blank model here. This is going to be the English model. And then just like before, we're going to do NLP. Actually, let's go ahead and just execute that by itself. Then we're going to do NLP underscore at, uh, dot add underscore pipe. And this is going to take one argument here. It's going to be the cap maker. So we're going to actually add that custom language component now into it. So if we were to do print NLP dot pipe underscore names, we can see that cap maker is now within our NLP pipeline. And notice that this is a custom component and we're not getting the errors that we saw in a, a few videos ago when I talked about Spacey 3 and some of the new things that changed in it. So now that we have that, we can make a text object and that's just going to be a simple string. This is a string. And now let's run it make a doc object and we're going to run it through our NLP. And if everything works correctly, you should see it printed off with a capitalized form. And we have string object has no cap it. Oh, I spelt it wrong. That's why. Let's go ahead and just reset all these kernels just to make sure everything loads correctly. We go through and we just kind of run everything again. And we should see that there, text string, fantastic. And now we've taken in this object and we've printed off a capitalized form of it. So that's how you create a custom language component and how you add this custom factory into a spacey model. Now there's gonna be a huge problem here. If I were to want to save this model so I can use the traditional NLP.2disk, let's just call this test model. Now. At this stage, you might think to yourself, if you load it up, new NLP equals, uh, we're going to say spacey.load, and we're going to load in that new test model that we just saved, which is located right here. Uh, that hasn't updated yet. <laughs> Let's call it test model 2 so we can actually see it updated. There we go. 
there we go. This is what it looks like. This is our new model over here on the left. So if I were thinking to myself, I can just load it back in and I can try it again. So let's do doc. Now let's do make a new text, text two. I'm gonna make this, this is another string, okay? Now we can do doc equals NLP and I can pass in text two and it's gonna work. Everything looks fantastic here. However, do not get cocky at this stage. Let's go ahead and reset all of these kernels. Let's rerun that just so we could import Spacey. And now let's try to load it again. And you're gonna see that we're gonna get an error. And this error is telling you, if you look down, the same thing that it's telling you before, uh, that your factory is not in the Spacey predetermined set of factories. So at this point, you've got a couple different options moving forward. You can either include this bit of information at the beginning of every script that's going to call your um, your function or your your new NLP model, or what you can do is you can work it in to the existing uh, package for your when you package your model, you can package the the factory component with it. There's uh, advantages to doing both. We're going to address those kind of moving forward, but I want you to be familiar with the fact that there are limitations to these factories. You're going to have to find a way to incorporate them into, into Spacey. And right now, off the shelf, you're not able to do that. However, in the next few videos, I'll show you how to add these in there. Uh, but for right now, if you want to just do this simply moving forward and you have a custom factory, I recommend just working with it in your script. And if you, when you're ready to actually deploy the model, that's when you want to start taking the next steps to making your, your model deployable and more of a finalized product where this component is built into the model so that Spacey knows how to handle a custom factory when any user installs your model onto their system. They will not get this error. That's going to be it for this video, though. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below. And like I said in the past, if you want to be generous, feel free to contribute via Patreon, also linked down below. Thank you.